Plant hormones can be divided into two categories. One is the promoter, a second is the inhibitor. And within the promoter, we keep auxin, gibberellin, cytokinin, right? And uh, in the inhibitors, we used to keep uh, ethylene and the abscessic acids. This is Dr. Pankaj Kumar, and in this session, we will be talking about auxin, right? So first of all, we will see the general features of auxin. So you see, auxin is primarily known for the growth or we can say elongation of the sting, right? Chemically, it is an indole-3 acetic acid and uh, there are different variants of uh, uh, indole-3 acetic acid. It may be a 4-chloroindole-3 acetate or in, in the form of indole acetyl aspartic acid, right? So, indole acetic acid is found in all plants and fungi and the main site of synthesis are the meristematic tissues, okay? Most importantly, it also occurs in the human urine, especially among those persons who is suffering from a disease called pellagra. Okay? So, in order to understand the entire thing, first of all, have a look at some of the experiment that has been done during the discovery of auxin. So, the very first name come of the Darwin. So, the very contribution of the Darwin was that he first of all observed that uh, uh, there is a lightward bending of the coleptide. You can see in the diagram over there, uh, the moment a uh, light is given over there, what happens? There is going to have a lightward bending, okay? And when the tip is actually uh, cut down, then there is no bending, okay? So, there must be certain uh, growth material available on the tip portion. That was actually concluded by Darwin, but unfortunately, he could not explain it further. So, the very significance of this particular experiment is limited only to the fact that the it was first of all recognized that the there is a lightward bending of the coleoptile. Okay. In this series, the second experiment came of the Boysen and Jensen experiment, and they were the first who did their experiment with the mica seeds. Have a look at this diagram. You see, when mica is inserted on the dark side, so this is your dark side then there is a no bending okay but when it is illuminated at the lighter side or the side where actually we are giving the light actually it is bending is going to occur okay and in the third what happens when the tip is cut and again the mica seed is actually placed over there then again there is going to have a bending if the lightward bending is going to be given over there okay so one thing is very clear by this particular experiment that the there there is a some substances which is actually promoting growth at the shaded portion because you know very well why the bending is going to occur because if in this particular portion what happened growth is more in comparison to this area okay so that is why the bending is going to happen towards the light so boysen and jensen is known for uh, their experiment with mica and eventually they concluded that there must be certain growth substances in the darker side which eventually leads to the bending but the real credit for the entire thing goes to fw went okay so what they did they first of all extracted the auxin in agar black so they cut the coleoptile tip put on a agar cube right so this entire auxin actually diffused into it and then this agar block was kept over here okay so what he observed when it was kept at this particular side, so naturally in this side there is going to have a more growth resulting into bending, right? So it, it proves that uh, uh, there is a certain substances or growth substances that are responsible for the growth of the stain, okay? And it was uh, uh, Wendt who coined the term auxin, right? Now let's discuss the biosynthesis, that how auxin is actually synthesized. You see, tryptophan is the precursor for the auxin. You know very well, tryptophan is an amino acid and tryptophan requires zinc. So, biosynthesis occurs in the presence of zinc. And we know very well that chemically it is nothing but it is indole-3 acetic acid, right? Now, let's talk about the bioassay. Now, what is bioassay? Bioassay are some sort of test which uh, uh, tell us the very activity of the hormone. So, for the different hormone, there is going to have a different bioassay. For instance, 
for auxine, the three bioassay is very very popular. One what we call Avina curvature test, second what we call Avina section test and third what we call split P test. Now have a look how actually this particular test is actually done. You see, first of all, tip is cut, placed in a agar block, right? Now this agar block has a auxine. Now it is differentially placed, right? And then what will happen? That bending is going to happen, okay? Now what happens if we draw a hub imaginary line over there, there is some angle over there, okay? And this angle is directly proportional to the total amount of auxin that is present over there. So that is actually the test. And this is how the very activity of auxin or the amount of auxin is actually being tested. This is what we call auxin bioassay, right? Now let's talk about the distribution. We have already discussed that auxin is primarily present in the meristematic tissue. And auxins are found in two forms the free form as well as the bounded form and there is a there is an equilibrium that exists between free and bounded forms right but the primary site for auxin production is the apical suit meristem okay and uh, one thing is very clear that uh, uh, the transport of auxin is both polar as well as uh, apolar or non-polar we can say please remember that polar transport is valid only for the natural auxin for synthetic auxin, what happens? That transport is going to be apolar or bipolar, right? So this is about the auxin distribution. We, we know very well by the experiment of Boysen and Jensen, right? There is going to have a light induced extraction of auxin at the eliminated portion, as you can see in the diagram. You see that uh, light is actually being given over there. Now it is, it is hypothesized that when light comes there, then this side of auxin actually get destroyed okay so this side of auxin since it is get destroyed so naturally on the sedic portion the amount of auxin increases and since the amount of auxin increases then what happens it to uh, induce growth okay results into lightward bending right so light induced destruction of auxin is actually occurring at the elementary side and it's one of the hypothesis for the bending of the coleoptile towards the light okay Right, now let's talk about the auxin functions and one of the most important functions is the cell enlargement. So let's try to see what are the sequence of steps that leads to cell enlargement. You see, first of all, there are certain receptors on the plasma membrane of a uh, cell which is about to on the process of growth. Okay, so what happens that IAA that is indole acetic acid binds to those receptors. Okay. So the moment it binds, what happens that the plasma membrane is going to release protons. Okay. And those protons reaches the cell wall. So once the proton reaches the cell wall, what they do, they just degrade the fibril of the cellulose and other bonding so that it become loosened. Right. And we know very well that within the cell, there is a protoplast is there. So out of the turgor pressure, what will happen? It will enlarge as you can see in the diagram also. So you can see there that uh, here what happens that uh, indole acetic acid is binding to the receptors right and uh, this proton is actually being transported to the plasma to the cell wall and finally what we see that uh, the entire things is actually get expanded due to the turgor pressure of the protoplast and the moment uh, it is uh, expanded to the requisite level then again the cellulose things is actually resynthesized so this is how the cell enlargement is going to happen as a result of the auxin, right? Let's talk about one more function and that is apical dominance. Now, what is apical dominance? You see, the presence of apical bird results into inhibition of the lateral birds. And this particular phenomena is actually called as a apical dominance. So you can see there here. So this is an active bird. And since this is an active bird, it will not allow to grow to the lateral birds. Okay, so this is what we call apical dominance. Now the question is why it happens? It happens due to HDT or what we call hormonal directed transport. So what happens? The auxin that is present at the apical portion just attracts all the nutrients. And uh, as a result, the lateral birds are going to be deprived of the nutrients. And since they are deprived, they won't be able to grow, right? Now, what are the way to come out of the apical dominance? The way is either cut the tip or 
spray with cytokinin or auxin. If you are spraying with cytokinin and auxin, then lateral buds are also capable of attracting the nutrients and thereby they can grow. Okay, so this, these are the two ways in which apical dominance can be overcome. Right? Let's discuss few more functions of auxins. One of the important functions of auxin is a tropic movement. So it shows both geotropic as well as phototropic movement. So for this cholodony vent theory has been given over there, right? So what happens when the seeds germinate? In course of germination, the auxin is present both in radical and primule and due to gravity, they are present at the lower level as you can see in the diagram, right? So what happens, the auxin at greater concentration, they suppresses the growth. So once the growth is suppressed, what will happen? That this is going to have a more growth and it will lead to downward bending. This is what we call geotropic. Okay. So what we have learned that higher auxin in radical suppresses growth. But the higher auxin in plenule, right? This what will do? This will promote growth. And once the growth will promote it, what will happen? It is going to have upward bending. And this upward bending is actually called as a phototropic movement, right? So auxin thereby plays a very important role in tropic movement as well, okay? The important thing what we have to keep in mind that higher concentration of auxin in radical suppresses the growth, whereas in case of primule, it promotes the growth, right? As far as the very function of the entire auxin is concerned, right thank you have a look few more functions you know there are variant of auxin that is going to utilize as a rooting hormone and what are their variants they are naphthalin acetic acid and indole butyric acid there are some variant of auxin that is also utilized as a herbicide for instance 24d that is 24 dichlorophenoxy acetic acid and 245t that is used as a BD site. Uh, they also induce parthenocarpic, but mind it, there are three hormones that is known for inducing parthenocarpic, that is ethylene, gibberlene, and auxin. And as far as their potency is concerned, ethylene is the highest, followed by gibberlene, followed by auxin. Okay. Uh, they have a feminizing effect. And this is not the alone hormone that they have a feminizing effect. Let me add over here that cytokinin ethylene and auxin all three have a feminizing effect only one hormone which induces male male effect and that is the gibberlin so gibberlin is often also called as a male hormone okay now auxin also promotes the signal activity of cambium often it is observed in a hyperactivity during the secondary growth okay and uh, finally uh, it also leads to delay of the abscesses layer because the very function of auxin is just antagonistic to the abscisic acid. Abscisic acid acts as an inhibitor, but it is going to act as a promoter. So that's why it inhibits the formation of abscisic layer. Okay. So that's all.